It ain't the left side or the right side. Then it must be the fence side. side. It ain't the left side. The Thank right you, Solo D. Side. Welcome to another episode of On the Fence Side here with Kat and Paul Pickin. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, and on iHeartRadio. The Dolphins lost their fifth game in a row, 35-17 to to the New England Patriots, really putting out that last glimmer of hope that they could really turn that season around. They dropped a 4-7 and seven on the season. Not a big surprise with on the scoreboard. The Dolphins were 17-point underdogs. They lost by 18, so Vegas had it almost right on the nose. So 10 minutes into the game, the Patriots are down 14 to nothing. Then the Dolphins get a gift touchdown. Rashad Jones scoops up the ball, runs it in. Then the game starts to slow down a little bit. And it looks like the Dolphins have a little glimmer of hope. But then, Paul, the wheels kind of fell off from there. Yeah, and I know there's a lot of different things we can point at, but it felt like the biggest momentum positive that quickly turned into a negative was that really weird call on the uh, the forced fumble on the punt that I, I still don't understand why it wasn't Miami's ball, to be 100% honest with you. That really should have been Dolphins' ball. Suddenly you're talking about a big play with momentum swing, and instead it goes back to the Patriots. So that was the play, I think, for me that really started to turn the game towards Miami and then immediately swung it back in the other direction. And from there, it just it was ugly. Yeah, another thing that really turned it around is yeah, the Dolphins are down 21 to 10. The game's starting to level out a little bit. Dolphins are driving down the field again. You know, they they moved the ball pretty successfully at, at parts, especially in the second quarter. Then Matt Moore throws an interception close to halftime here. Dolphins were down 20, 21 to 10 at the time. Matt Moore throws an interception, but I got to tell you, Devontae Parker, this is the third game in a row, or this is the second game in a row that I put an interception on him. It was, I thought he was responsible directly for two interceptions in the Bucks game and this one right here, close to the end of the first half. Yeah, I'm, I'm not letting Matt Moore completely off the hook because they weren't the greatest of throws. There were a lot of things, and I'm sure we'll talk about this. But Devontae Parker, you remember last season when I was bringing up some of the effort issues on various plays that I thought interceptions were directly attributable to Devontae Parker. We're we're right back there again, and, and, and I'm almost to the point now where it's a good and bad that Devontae Parker's not living up to his hype. The, the good side of that is maybe Miami will be able to justify investing in Jarvis Landry this offseason because of the fact that they may not have to invest as heavily into Devontae Parker down the road here. This was supposed to be our see-what-we-got uh, season out of Devontae Parker. I think we're seeing what we got. So – that may be the thing that brings Jarvis Landry back after all. Yeah, I think you're starting to look more correct on that. I mean, Parker, really the last three years, dating back to his final year at Louisville, the questions with him were effort and being able to stay healthy. And we definitely haven't seen that. I I thought in the first couple of games of the season and in the preseason, we started seeing a different Devontae Parker going up for the football, being a little bit more aggressive. But then he has three games in a row where he's not playing because of injury. Then the last two games, he's just been absolutely out to lunch. I mean, what a shame. And, yeah, it's starting to look like Jarvis Landry might be more important to this team than I originally thought. Yeah, again, I, I, I hate to go down the list here with negative, negative, negative. But, yeah, unfortunately, not a lot to be excited about in this game either. I mean, you go down the list here, the Dolphins' offensive line – allows no sacks here in the first about 25 minutes of the game. Then in the last 35, they allow seven. I mean, I looked, unfortunately, at all seven of those sacks. If I were to place blame for those seven sacks, I put two on Mike Pouncey, who's just terrible at this point in his career, two on Ted Larson, who's always been terrible, one on Jesse Davis, who was a little bit late uh, blocking linebacker Kyle Van Noy, put one on Tunzel, who whipped on a block uh, with with Trey Flowers, and one on Matt Moore who held the ball in a cornerback blitz. But, you know, I've got to look at this offensive line and think, Juwan James has to be back next year. I don't know why they're not more interested in extending this guy. Laramie Tunzel, I think, is going to keep getting better. He just has the mental mistakes. But the interior of the offensive line, I don't even know where to go anymore. I just want to say one quick thing on those sacks. I I, I do lump 
probably three or so of those on Matt Moore, to be honest with you. I mean, yeah, the blocking wasn't spectacular, but, you know, there was one where he held – one or two where he held the ball too long, and then there was one where he not only held the ball too long, he pulled some type of weird spin move that ensured he wouldn't be able to throw the ball as – and, and just kind of ran around until he got tackled. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. I want to see some of these young players, and I think this is a perfect segue into what I want to see out of the rest of the Dolphins season. I have no illusions, and I love this team that Miami's winning the Super Bowl this year, even if they turn things around and, and somehow squeak into the playoffs. I don't have those illusions right now. So for me, what I want to see is I want to see Miami play some of these young guys, see what they've got in them. Play a David Fails. See if he can be that backup quarter, completely inexpensive, behind Ryan Tannehill when he's back and healthy. Play Isaac Asiata. See how big of a need it is to chase two guards in the offseason or possibly one. Start looking at ways that you can play somebody in place of Mike Pouncey potentially because Mike Pouncey is a big-ass contract and he's not living up to it in any way, shape, or form. I don't care what party line the coaching staff wants you to believe. So for me, that middle of that defensive line or offensive line, like you said, is definitely a mess that they need to look for fixes for. They need to be looking at players and analyzing them and finding ways to make it fun in the middle. I loved when they ran that flea flicker in this past weekend's game, regardless whether it was a completion or not. I want to see plays like that that make it fun and maybe get these guys playing up above their level right now and make defenses have to think. Yeah, I love the flea flicker, too. It wasn't a completion, but it was a pass interference call, which was a 30-plus yard penalty. Yeah, good things happen when you throw the ball downfield. And the Dolphins have been playing inside this box all year, which is a big reason they haven't been able to get the running game going. Again, in this game, Damian Williams and Kenyon Drake, 17 carries for 58 yards. On the ground, defensively, Patriots running backs have 31 carries, 175 yards, over 5.4 yards a carry on that too. So a lot of these great article from Dave Hyde about how the Dolphins really haven't corrected any of these problems. But going back to your point, Paul, yeah, I'd like to see some of these young players get in, especially on offense. I mean, it's amazing to me how they haven't been able to carve a role for a, a Jakeem Grant on some of these plays. I would love for them to see – what they have with Isaac Asiata at left guard and with uh, with Jesse Davis at right guard for the rest of the year. At least see what you have. So you see if you do need two guards. Like you said, you know, defensively, I, I, it was Chase Allen started at middle linebacker, didn't have a great game. But, yeah, I, I, Cordae, Cordrea Tankersley was responsible for a big completion to Brandon Cooks. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think they do need to get some young players here on the field for the rest of the year. Cause I mean, what else are you going to do? You're, you're, what, what do you, else do you need to know about Jermon Bushrod and Ted Larson that you don't know already? No, I'm with you there. Not only that, I, I'm almost thinking, and I can't believe I'm saying this because when I say this, I'm going to tell you right now, Kiko Alonso is by far and away the better athlete of the two people I'm about to mention. Absolutely. 100%. But he has been such an atrocious hole in the defense. Doesn't know where to go. Doesn't know how to break down and stop over pursuing plays. Constantly out of position. Constantly just, we're just going to sum it up with bad here. And I don't know if it's you bench him for a game and start Mike Hall. I don't know if it, which obviously Kiko's the better athlete and should be the better football player than Mike Hall. He's got way more ability as far as talent, but God, he's just so terrible at times. It's almost like we need Gase to send a message to this guy. I mean, granted, I don't love the way our zone seems to be full of holes, but Kiko's a big asshole, whether it's man or zone right now, whether it's run game or pass, they need to do something here. And that is a detrimental aspect of this defense right now. I would be in favor of Kiko Alonso getting cut, and I don't care what happens with the money. I mean, I know he's paid through next year, but I don't care what happens with the money. He is so bad, I don't even know where to start. And uh, this has been five games now that he's just been out to lunch on every single play from quarter one to four. Um, I, I look forward to him getting replaced 
next year. But contractually, the Dolphins can't do that. They would have to release him because he's so bad, which I hope they do, which I don't think they will. But it, it does amaze me that, again, I go back to this. I hate to keep beating this drum. I'd like to move on. But Jay Ajayi gets traded because he doesn't carry out his assignments. And you see this crap from Devontae Parker and from Kiko Alonso. And you see the Dolphins, you know, in the top five of penalties a year. It's like nobody else is held accountable on the team. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, I, I actually did want to touch on the Jay Ajayi thing real quick. Uh, but before I do, I do want to mention to the folks listening right now, we, we actually have a Black Friday through Cyber Monday sale on our on our website, on the finside.threadless.com. A portion of it does go to charity. Go check it out. It's a great thing. We're going to carry it a little bit longer um, out there, so definitely make sure you hit that before it's gone. But as far as Jay Ajayi goes, we got to see a little bit more of, of what we've been hearing uh, this this past weekend. When he got five carries in Philly, they won the game. And, you know, he gets cornered in the locker room by a reporter. And you could use the word cornered all you want. But you could hear his disdain in his responses about not getting the ball enough. So, for me, I, I, I've coached before, and I know it wasn't at the same level. But if I had anybody that was bitching after a win that they didn't get theirs, they probably wouldn't be getting theirs for a while. I don't care who they were. So uh, while Miami may be down two running backs this, this coming weekend, with Kenny and Drake being the only truly healthy running back right now, I, I, I still struggle with the idea of Jay Ajayi at this point because I don't know what this new diva thing is that he's got going on, but I, I don't want it, that anywhere near a locker room that I have anything to do with. I would take his talent level over any of the garbage Miami has a running back right now. I'll tell you that. Uh, Kenny and Drake. Now, uh, just over the last couple of games, you look, he fumbled a huge play in the Raiders game that turned the momentum of the game. He fumbled again in New England, and it should have been two fumbles on just nine carries. Um, Ajaye, I think, had one lost fumble here and, and almost 400 carries for the Dolphins over the last year. I understand what you're saying about the character would still take him and make it work, uh, and I think the Eagles are going to be able to do that. Other news, Paul, William Hayes is going to go on injured reserve. The Dolphins have made an odd move in the offseason where they basically traded for him and had, I think, about a two-year, $11 million contract with him, but then rescinded that second year. So William Hayes will be a free agent after the year. Would you want him back at 5 or $6 million? I definitely want him back. Um, hopefully it stays at the $5 million or below mark. I mean, there there are definitely – a lot of dollars invested at the, at the defensive end position right now. So Miami may have a few tough decisions to make in regards to whether or not they reinvest, uh, you know, another five or six million dollar contract there. But I will tell you, he he has been better than advertised for this defensive line, and I absolutely love having him out there. So if there's a way to bring him back and it's cost effective, I'm all for it. But if it's at the expense of bringing back say Jarvis Landry given what we've seen from Devontae Parker as much as I do like William Hayes and want to see him back here I'd have to prioritize like a Jarvis Landry over him I'd have to prioritize a guard over him right now so it's not detrimental to who he is or what he is but Miami's got to prioritize Uh, a few other positions uh, and one other thing too is Andre Branch you know the Dolphins have no choice but to keep him next year as well. I mean, I, I don't think he's a terrible player, but other than having three sacks in a span of five quarters, I don't think Branch has done anything this year. And you look at the Patriots game, Andre Branch completely silent. Then Charles Harris gets on the field, uh, whips Nate Solder at left tackle, forces an interception by Bobby McCain before Bobby McCain, yeah. you know, punched somebody and got ejected from the game. But Charles Harris is showing that ability. I think William Hayes, it would have been, for all the money they threw around this offseason, I thought it would have been worth it to include that second year of the contract at $5 million, bring him back for that too. So we'll see what happens. I, I don't see Hayes coming back. He's probably, at this point in his career, going to go to a better team, and I think a team would be willing to pay him $5 million. So, Paul, this is also the first week, too, where the talk of Adam Gase and his job security, or lack thereof, is at least starting to get some whispers among Dolphins' Twitter. I mean, not a surprise. Dolphins start off 4-2, and two, 
slide to four and seven. Let's say let's say that the Dolphins finish this season four and twelve or five and eleven. Do you think Adam Gase is his head is on the chopping block at that point? It definitely deserves a little bit of reining in at that point in time. It's it's a tough call because while I'm not going to make excuses, I am a fan of next man up. Uh, Miami has had to deal with more players going or more salary going to injured reserve than almost anybody else in the league. I believe they're actually in first in the league in terms of that, especially after Hayes went down. I believe it's like 35, 36 million in cap hit sitting on injured reserve right now. So that that's definitely a tough pill to swallow for any coach. But I think Gase needs to truly step back and do a little bit of self-evaluation here because he may need somebody that he trusts that will run his offense to come in and be his offensive coordinator on game days. I'm sick and tired of seeing almost distracted play calling on offense. And that's what it feels like. It feels like distracted play calling. Because as a head coach, he's got to focus on on, on the team. And so having somebody there, he can go over and say what he wants to see run, but having somebody there that can manage some of that aspect for him would be a good positive thing. If things go from bad to worst, and they can't get much worse than they are right now, uh, and there's internal turmoil, which I, I don't think there is with the Dolphins and their coaching staff, then I think it could be possible. Other than that, if the Dolphins finish the season, you know, six and ten, which is what I'll predict at this point, and they kind of look like they have over the last couple of weeks, which isn't good, but I, I think the organization is going to be willing to say that Adam Gase deserves another year here, at least another year to turn this around. But yeah, he definitely needs more help. I mean, I'm very surprised at just the lack of answers, the lack of creativity on offense. You know, if it it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So it will be interesting to see, and it'll be interesting to follow throughout the rest of the year. I point the finger mostly up, up in the front office though. I mean, I have this team is bloated with players who were not good last year, who are 29 to 33 years old. I'm talking about Julius Thomas and Lawrence Timmons, and you know, extending needlessly the contracts of, of Cameron Wake and Rashad Jones and Branch and Alonzo. Every move they've made in the front office has been wrong. And just so you know, too, Jeff Ireland received a contract extension. He's not the GM of the Saints, but he's basically second man. Received a contract extension from the Saints, and Rick Spielman is GMing a nine and two Vikings team. That is life as a Dolphins fan, especially this year. Let, 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 let's find something positive to look at to end the show on here. Uh, what what's one positive thing you're you're looking to see out of Miami down the stretch here? Very interested to see two players on the defensive line, uh, Charles Harris and Vincent Taylor. Uh, Davin Gotcha, I think has played as he's obviously been a steal at defensive tackle, but every time I see Harris and Taylor getting more action on the defensive line, uh, I see better things happening. So I'm looking forward to seeing them play increased roles here throughout the rest of the season. For me, I really, and I know he got ejected this week, but I really want to see Bobby McCain continue to see his control of that nickel spot. He has been a brighter and brighter spot as this season wore on, ejection or no. He's really shown that he belongs on his team and belongs on his defense. So I really want to see a lot more of him as, as we go along here and see what he's able to do back there in that secondary meshing with everybody. So I think that's a really positive step as well, although I do love what I've seen out of the defensive tackles thus far. And one real positive thing I'll end on is the Dolphins right now – if they finish five and eleven or six and ten, we can expect them to have a top ten pick in the NFL draft, and presumably they're going to have Ryan Tannehill back under center next year, which is at least going to put a lot of things back to normal. Um, so if you get Tannehill back and you get a top ten pick, and you've got some of these young players stepping up here at the end of the year, showing some ability, and you've got some veterans coming back too, along with the Indomitian Sues and the Cam Wake, you may have a good combination of veterans and younger players here in 2018. That will do it for our wrap-up of the New England Patriots-Miami Dolphins matchup. 
You can follow Paul and I on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, iTunes, YouTube, iHeartRadio. And if it's not on the right side and it is not on the left side, it is on the fin side. It ain't the left side or the right side. And it must be the fin side. It ain't the left side or the right side. And it must be the fin side. Listen, Dolphins fans across the land all tuning in to see what's going on.